Quiet on the set. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Blaine Irving, and if you're listening to me right now, and you're listening in your car, you are probably listening to us from the TuneIn app on your phone. If you're listening from anywhere else, you could be listening to us from the computer or possibly the TuneIn app on Roku TV. Regardless, you are listening to the best station in Detroit, the platform of champions, Worship Center Radio. Hello, this is Apostle Nataki Tompkins, and you're listening to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Are you willing to support a ministry that's doing work for the Lord worldwide? We understand that it's hard wanting to make sure that you sow into good ground. Well, Worship Center Radio is good ground. Reaching as many as 50 countries worldwide, we have put the great commission given to us by Jesus Christ in action. Support us as we continue to do the work. Go to www. WorshipCenterRadio.net and on the right hand side click the Donate Now area and send us your gift so we may continue to broadcast throughout the world and bring to you programming that elevates you to the next level in God. We thank you for your support and continue to listen to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station. Worship Center Radio, the platform of champion. Hi, I'm Linda Hunt. Welcome to the Marketplace Connection. Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are so blessed and glad just to be a part of the day. God is good today, and He is good all the time. I am your host connector. I am Linda Hunt, and I greet you in love today. And we thank God for those of you that have taken time out of your day to tune into this broadcast wherever you are all over the world. Uh, we go into various countries, and we greet you in love today. And we thank you for taking time, just to take time to come by and to say hello, just to take time and come by and to listen. And so we thank God for that today. We hope that something that is said today will minister to your hearts. We have a wonderful guest today that is going to speak to you about some things that we believe in the marketplace, the government mountain of marketplace. And we believe God is going to bless you today to hear from her. But God says in 3 John 1 and 2, that he would, that you would prosper, be in health and prosper as your soul prosper. God wants you to prosper physically, mentally, socially, naturally in every area. It's not just money that God wants you to prosper in. He wants every area of your life Amen. to prosper so that you can be a vessel for him for your for his good use. And so we just thank God that today you will hear something that is going to be a blessing to you in the natural and as well in the spirit. And so we just thank God for that. And I'm just going to say a prayer for you today yes, because we do you. want you to hear what thus saith the Lord. The Marketplace Connection is a uh, broadcast that is to bring you information that will upbuild you, that will prosper you in every area of your life. It's a little out of the box compared to all of the other wonderful hosts that we have on this radio station. But we want to deal with you in the marketplace, those of you that you feel that you have a call, but yet Yet you're not doing anything with the call. And we thank God for the church. We thank God for all the pastors, the apostles, the leaders, the teachers, all of those within the four walls of the church. But God is calling us to go and to be salt and light. And so that's why I thank God for this broadcast, because we can come into every 30 uh, countries all over the world, and we can be salt and light in those countries. So we thank God for that. But Father, we just greet our listeners today with love in Jesus Christ, and we thank God for the Holy Ghost, that he will lead us and guide us to speak and say what you would 
would have us to speak over this internet medium today. Holy Spirit, we ask that you use us uh, to build up someone today, to comfort someone today, to send confirmation to someone today by your spirit. I pray that someone would be released to be free to do what you are calling them to do in your gifts and your callings because the gifts and your call, God, are irrevocable. So whatever you've given unto your people, God, we just ask in the name of Jesus that they would be inspired, God, that they would be motivated, that they would be moved to get up and do what thus saith the Lord. And so, Father, we give you praise and we give you honor for this day because it is the day that you made and we're just glad to be a part of it. We're just glad to be vessels, willing vessels to be used of you, God, in the name of Jesus. God, you said that you just use, you take the foolish things to confound the wise father is not many noble God is just just willing vessels God that you use to confound the wise and so father we just thank you for this opportunity that you have given us God on the worship center radio in the name of Jesus amen well today I'm just going to talk about this just a little bit because I do try to stay relevant to what is going on in the world but today is uh Halloween and we know that Halloween is a celebration of ghosts and goblins mm-hmm. and dead things and scary stages that are being set. And we know that it is a satanic holiday, okay? Mm-hmm. This is the holiday that the witches and the warlocks, and this is their day. Not a holy holiday. It is a satanic holiday. And I know um, they sweeten it up with candy and, you know, try to sugarcoat it. And uh, But it is a satanic holiday. It is demonic. And uh, they do it all in the name of fun. But I, And I didn't really understand myself. And, but, you know, when you know better, you do better. Amen. And so it's just, you know, my job just to enlighten you. Now, whatever you do, that's on you. I'm not trying to bring judgment or conviction. That's on you. But when you know better, you do better. And so we just pray today that you understand that what is going on in the world, it is not a holiday to be celebrated by us as Amen. believers. Amen. Amen. So I just, you know, and because, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about demonic things because I serve a risen king. Hallelujah. He is the king of king and yes. he is the Lord of lords. Amen. And he has all power in his hand, all power over the devil. Yes. Amen. And so I just want you to know that he is a defe- defeated foe. He is not a friend of mine. He is a defeated foe. Yes. So, and today I have a special guest. Uh, She specializes in serving the devil notice (laughs) that he has no power over the people of God. So if you, if you need someone that can help you in the area of anything that you're struggling in, any Mm -hmm. area that the enemy has control over your life, I want you to know that there are people, there are women and men of God that can serve the devil notice that his time is up in your life. And so you need to get with people that have power to cast the devil out. And that's what we do. We don't celebrate him. We cast him out. Uh, And so we thank God today for the guest that I know that God has anointed her, that she is a demon chaser. uh, She she is a terror to the dark, to the kingdom of darkness and to hell. Amen. So I just thank God for that. And I'm going to introduce her to you in a few minutes. Amen. And so I praise God for the woman of God, Donna Stallings. I thank God for what God has called her to do in the marketplace. And she has such an extensive bio, and I'm just going to read a little bit about her, and then I'm going to greet her, and we're going to talk, and we're just going to dialogue today and talk about some of the things that God is doing in her life, and he's doing some very special things in her life. Donna P. Stallings proudly served as president of the SYNC Technologies, a million-dollar technology consulting firm for over 15 years. Uh, the passionate Miss Stallings is just comfortable, is just as comfortable in meetings with chief officers and political figures, negotiating million, multi-million dollar contracts as she is working on site with her sleeves rolled up, problem solving. She possesses more than 25 years of a business uh, background and has currently has a consulting firm called DSK Solutions LLC. In addition to being a leader in the business world, Donna is also an an ordained pastor, prophetess, and evangelist, and a humanitarian. She is certified uh, motivational coach, and she also serves as a mentor to many worldwide. 
Prophetess Darling's host an annual kingdom summit called in, entitled Daughters Arise mm. that brings generations of women together yes. for spiritual renewing and self-esteem building while sharing successful business strategy. She has earned a distinguished reputation as a catalyst for change. Isn't that what we're supposed to be for as, as believers? Yes. We're supposed to be catalysts for change. Wherever we go, we should change the atmosphere. So Donna is considered a catalyst for change and a voice of hope to spread the message of love, reconciliation, and living on purpose. Donna Stallings is currently a candidate, amen, mm -hmm. a candidate elect <laughs> for a seat on the city council in yes. the city of Lathrop Village, Michigan. Amen. Her slogan is, empowered to lead, yes. committed to serve. Amen, amen. 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 To amen. every believer, I, I pray that for you, yes. that you be empowered to lead, empowered by the Holy Ghost, and committed to serve wherever you are, inside of the four walls of the church, outside of the four walls of the church, in your business, in your homes, wherever you go. Right. Be committed to serve. She is a marketplace woman. Praise well, God. we praise God for Hallelujah. you today, Amen. Pastor, Prophetess, Donna <laughs> Stalling. Welcome to the Marketplace Connection. Thank you, woman of God. I, I just want to thank you for being here in the Worship Center Radio Amen. Station, Detroit, the greatest radio Amen. station. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. God is moving you into Amen. the marketplace, moving you. Your voice is just, I just sense that the Lord is going to just move your voice through some things. And and I just see that now in the spirit uh, that there is a, a movement. There is a movement going. And, and the movement, this movement that you're in, God is going to push through. Mm -hmm. He's going to push some things. Some things are going to move out of the way. Mm -hmm. I just so keep the voice strong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Keep your heart strong Amen. because uh, they that believe in the Lord shall prosper. The, the Lord is your God. Hallelujah. Yes, you shall prosper. But anyway, God bless you this morning. <laughs> it is indeed a privilege and an honor to be here. I'm really grateful when sisters reach out to sisters. Absolutely. And you have been, uh, when you heard that I was running for city council, you have done nothing but encourage me and inspire this move of God because it, it definitely is a move of God. I never thought that I would do it. Uh, when I was uh, uh, president of my company, I would be asked several times, why don't you run for office? And I would say, absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. And so, again, I just want to thank you uh, for being a sister uh, who, who hears God and then moves on what God has said uh, just, just openly. No jealousy, right. no envy, right. but let's hook up. Let me take your gift, That's it. hook it up with your gift, and let's move the devil out of the way. Amen. It. Amen. So it's an honor to be here this morning, Amen. and and I'm thankful to God. Amen. Amen. Well, that, that yeah. is so true. I, I know that this, first of all, I believe that this is a season for women. And one thing that we have to do, and particularly as African-American women, you know, we've had so many disappointments and so many things that have happened to us, and it has caused us a lot of times to be mm -hmm. bitter mm -hmm. and to be jealous. Mm -hmm. But um, I've learned that, um, you know, when you embrace somebody's gift and they embrace your gift and, and we collaborate, mm -hmm. and I think that this is a season and a time, particularly for women, to collaborate. There's no room for jealousy. No. You know, whatever God has called you to do, I can't do it like you do it. That's, that's, whatever he has that's called true. me to do, you can't do it like I do it. That's because true. Because it's your gift. Amen. But if we take our gifts because we're better together. Amen. And we take our strengths and we put them together. Amen. And so I just believe in, I, I arranged, rearranged my schedule just to get you here. You know Because what? I knew that you only had a few days a before few days. election time. And I wanted the people to be able to see a woman of God that God is using in the marketplace, in the area of government. Yes. And so we have so many different areas and spheres that God is calling us to. He's calling us outside, you know, of the box, outside of the four walls. Yes, we go there. We get what we need to get. We get built up. We get encouraged. We get the word. We get empowered. But now it's, it's about going back out there. 
It is. It's about going out there. I want to comment on something that mm -hmm. you said. It is so critical that women understand that it's necessary for us to be in birthing rooms together. It's Absolutely. necessary for those that are called to be midwives to get into position. Uh, what the enemy has done, uh, we have been such a strength for our families. You know, uh, when you think about even the women in the Bible, it was a, a woman at the tomb that, that spread the news for to G, that Jesus had, had risen. Mm -hmm. And even before that, it was a woman that anointed Jesus for burial. Right. So we have always, and I can go on and on about That's the right. woman, That's the it. one woman that That's was it. there. And so, but when the one woman is there, we have to really make sure that we understand that we're there as a gateway for all of us to come in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the necessity of the power of women hooking up their anointings mm -hmm. and hooking up their love and hooking up their compassion and their passion will open up the gateway for us to take over all seven mountains and for us to begin to birth on top of the mountain. That's Amen. Right. As well That's as the valley. Right. So, so, um, I just want to encourage women, yeah. uh, women that are whatever sphere you're in, whatever place you're in, don't be afraid to be naked before another woman. God mm -hmm. will show you that one. Mm -hmm. And it's critical that we understand that we need each other. And it is the enemy's job because God said that the woman will bruise your head. And so we have to understand that as women, we are the enemy is always looking for the one that's going to birth the next prophet, the one that's going to birth the next anointed one that's going to keep crushing his head. And so he's supposed to attack us. And if he attack us, and if he can bring a breach between us, mm -hmm. amen, mm -hmm. uh, to weaken the power of the woman mm -hmm. crushing his mm -hmm. head, uh, he will be able to do so. But greater is he that oh, is yes, in sir. each of us. And and so we're coming yes, just like you and I are coming to that gather. Yes. And even right now, I'm feeling a surge. I'm feeling a great, uh, a different anointing because our anointings, what yes. our anointings bring together yes. is different than what our anointings will bring separate. Yes. And so, I, you know, I can go on and on about that. I know I'm here to talk about business, but this is critical. Yes, it is. That when one of us gets positioned in a place of business that first of all we don't start acting like a man and start feeling like we have to be have the 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 ability and the characteristics of a man all you have to do is continue to be the woman that God has put God puts you there because of who you are right now That's and right. what he's going to do is elevate who you are amen that does mean that you have to study it to, to show yourself approved it mm -hmm. does mean that you have to read and you have to uh, begin to uh, uh, look at your look at your environment, but it does not mean that you have to change your character. Right. It does not mean that you have to become hard in your heart, mm -hmm. because a woman's heart has to stay pliable mm -hmm. so that God can begin to show her things. Mm -hmm. When you're at the board table, and when you're at the table with the chairman, when you're sitting before the governor, when you're sitting before the mayor, or whoever, uh, a woman has to understand that God has put her there because she's a woman. That's right. Uh, and greater. The greatness of God always comes through if we don't change our character mm. while we're negotiating and being at the table yeah, with yeah. opposites. You know, when you were speaking, I, the scripture came to me about the woman in the alabaster box. Yes. And how when she opened that box, the aroma filled the room. Yes. See, we carry an aroma. Yes. We, we, we carry the perfume of we the do. Lord. We okay, do. and women, you know, even in the Bible, I have found a scripture. You know, perfume brings you joy because I love perfume. Okay? Yes, and so I was like, okay, God, that's that is very accurate. Yes. And so, you know, women, we bring a different anointing. We bring a different yes. scent. You know, and, and so just like that woman in that alabaster box, yes. and she was among those men. Yes, and they were, you know, critical of her and why is she doing this? Yes, but Jesus knew. Jesus knew, and yeah. he knew, and she had she had something. That's that's one of my uh, scriptures that I've been studying, mm -hmm. and um, the, the the power of this woman. We study her box, and we study her aroma, and even looking at you now, you're a flower. You have so many uh, uh, tenants to your anointing. 
Amen. And and I'm sure that you've been underestimated, but don't change your appearance because that's what God uses Amen. to get you through the door. Let them underestimate you. And then when you get in, show the fullness of God. But with the power of this woman that had oil. Now, we think that it was just oil that she that she saved up to give to God. And it was. Mm -hmm. But we don't understand the power and the purpose yes. of that oil. Because in the three things that she had that women, uh, that women have to have and that we have to maintain is she had courage mm -hmm. to walk into a room full of men. She had courage to go and break tradition. She had courage to look at them rolling her, rolling their eyes mm -hmm. and, and looking at her with, with uh, uh, just a dismayed look. But she kept walking over them yeah. to her purpose. And as women and she didn't change her beauty she just right. kept going with what she had to do and the other thing she had was discernment she understood that it was time to anoint That's that right. it was time she understood the 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 exact uh purpose and the time that she needed to go and anoint Jesus Jesus told them I'm sitting with you but this woman understands yeah. that I'm going to die and I need to be anointed now or else I will die a criminal's death. Yeah. Without that anointing, Jesus would have faced the possibility of dying a criminal's death. All he needed to be was anointed. All the men were glad to just be in the room. But the woman knew that there was a purpose. And the last thing she had was anointing. She was a, that bottle was full of anointing. That bottle was full of glory. And the Bible says that she anointed his head and she had courage to anoint Jesus. Who has courage to go and anoint the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But if we stay in our zone and if we stay in our purpose and we begin to grow who we are and understand the glory of who we are and the the authority of who we are stepping over tradition tradition stepping over those that said you're not good enough to be in the room stepping over everything for her purpose and then Jesus tells them don't touch her don't talk about her as a matter of fact this woman is going to be preached about wherever she goes and it's because she kept in tune she didn't lose her femininity yes, she did yes. not lose who she was and she knew that that alabaster box that oil was put aside for such a time as this. And I want to encourage all the entrepreneurs out there. There's something yes. in your house that mm -hmm. God is wait, just waited for a prophet to come and begin to release you, uh, to begin to open up your house and look around your house. What is it that you have Sin. that you can step over failure, wow. that you can step over uh, places where man said that you could not be, where you could step? It's something inside of you. It's something in your house that God wants you to bring to the altar and anoint the, the mind of Christ, anoint the, the, the heart of Jesus Christ. She anointed him. And from then on, it was said that she will be preached throughout the world. I'm here to tell you, woman of God, Amen. that there is something that every woman has, every man has, that God says, if you use it for my glory, yeah. it will be preached about yes. throughout the world. Throughout the Amen. World. Oh, my God. Glory okay, to God. All right. So ha. our theme today, just so you know, is the woman. You already heard about the call, and that's the other <laughs> part of the woman, the call, yes. and politics. Yes. Amen. And that's our theme, uh, Pastor, that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about you. We we might not get through all of these questions. It's okay, because God is, the Holy Spirit is going to have his way, okay? So listeners, just be encouraged today. Whatever you hear today, take it. And, and put it in your heart, particularly women, because we believe that this is a word from the Lord today and an end time season word for you today. Yes, So Lord. just tell me a little bit about your uh, journey. We, we read your bio. Tell me a little bit about your journey in the business world. And uh, was it hard being a woman leader primarily in a man's world? Well, you know what? Uh, the heart is relative. It, it, it just depends on, again, if you lose yourself in it. Okay. And um, I never, ever thought that I would be president of a company. Okay. And so what happened is I we have in 1989, my family formed a company called, and, and, and we just sat in a room. Uh, we, we thought about it, and we sat in a room and decided to form our company. Okay. And so even then, I was in corporate America. I worked for Ford Motor Company for 22 years, where I was able to learn the corporate standards, and I sat in, in uh, I was a liaison uh, 
uh, between the dealers and the engineers. I trained engineers. I trained executives in technology. I trained. I was the trainer of all the new administration that came in. So even, and I did that as a clerk. I started off as a clerk, and uh, my clerk, uh, being a clerk, I'm always looking for, someone told me yesterday, you're so curious. I said, it's just the nature that God has given me. So I would always look, in whenever position you're in, the key is to look for a door. God always has a door yes. in every place that we, we end up in, and, and technology was a part of our company company. So we have a company over here, but I'm still in corporate America. I'm still learning. And I sat behind a very smart woman. And as I was doing my clerk duties, I learned her job. She was the highest, uh, uh, she was on the highest level in our department. But I started backing her up. I started learning technology and programming and all kinds of uh, uh, technological uh, methodologies. And, and I, I became her assistant, uh, but I wasn't paid for it while I was still a clerk. Okay. And uh, my name started getting around Ford Motor Company as a clerk. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And, and so I started getting uh, managers started coming to me uh, to promote me. And this was without a degree. I did go to school. I do have two years in, in computer information systems. Mm -hmm. I've gone to seminary for two years. And I do have a degree in family life education. Okay. Uh, so I, I just want to encourage whoever's out there, whatever position you're in, there's a door of entry mm -hmm. for you. And so, but you have to perfect the place that you're in right. uh, to a place where not to do just enough. Many of us do just enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not there early. We don't go early enough. We don't mm -hmm. go, uh, uh, we don't give enough. Mm -hmm. And so I, as a clerk, I became the, the trainer of all of the new staff that came in. As a clerk, I wrote the first electronics uh, package that Ford Motor Company used. As a clerk, I became the uh, main assistant, the main technology person that executives would call if they needed. And then eventually, one of the executives came looking for me and said, I have to have you. There were people that were uh, competing against me with degrees, but he had to have me because of what I presented right. when I was out there. You know. Uh, I don't like women or men that say, I'm just a clerk or I'm just this. You are in a place of advancement, right. whether or not you know it. The Bible says that he has given us an expected end, that his thoughts are good towards us. Amen. To give us an expected end. So we always have to look for doors. But to make a long story short, uh, this wonderful... Um, <coughs> Uh, executive came for me and he said, I wanted to have you. So I just started getting promoted, mm -hmm. promotion after promotion, promotion at Ford Motor Company. As a clerk, this is where this started. <laughs> and um, I became a uh, working with, um, um, again, working with dealers and making sure that new parts and things were operating, working with rebates, but I love training. Uh, and so I was the one that would go and introduce new technologies to the engineers as well as the executives. And after a while, um, I, I uh, it got a little heavy because uh, my company started growing. And I was doing both for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually it came to a place where we decided that we were going to to go after a multi-million dollar contract. And we're this small company and we are going after, we are in a race with major corporations. But I was so close to the hand of God on my life that when I would be in church service, because I love church, I love prayer, uh, my, my anointing is to prophesy, unlock, and to, to intercede change into the earth. Mm -hmm. And so while I would be in, in prophetic services, I would get pushes from apostles and from prophets that says, swim with the big fish. So this would be in my mind all the time. Even though we were a small company, I knew that there was a place for big fish. Now, um, again, so I, we go in and as a strategy, we went in and I became president. Uh, we won our first multi-million dollar contract. Of course, it was difficult because being woman-owned, being a minority company, you have to shine. You have to work twice as hard as anyone else. These larger companies were shocked. Everybody was watching these, 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 these huge companies. I'm talking about worldwide companies that we beat. 
We beat by the hand of God, but we beat because we were consistent in our excellent work. We were consistent. We didn't beat because we were a minority. We beat because we were very good at what we did, and we took them by surprise. And that's what God will do with all of us. If we are just faithful to what he has given us, he will take the enemy by surprise. So nobody's eyes were on us. They were probably laughing because we were this little bitty company. But that's what really pushed us into uh, the the place of uh, just being a dynamic technological uh, company. And I stepped on the platform as uh, president of the company. Once <coughs> uh -huh. I stepped on the platform, and trust me, I, I, I asked God, God, are you sure? You know, I'm preaching, I, I'm doing this. Uh, are you sure? In my thoughts, I'll do this for a couple of years to make sure that it was a family business. I believe in legacy and whatever I do. And my goal was to leave a legacy. And I, I'll do this a couple of years and, and I'll go back to ministry full time. But God said, said, no, once I stepped on the platform and announced that I was president of this company, it just took off. F doors of favor began to open in and government. It's still, it's still operating? And, and I've, no, we sold it. It's 25 years. And this is why I have time now uh, to, oh, okay. to do this because God is shifting me again. But, but doors will open if you will just step on to uh, the platform okay. and doors begin to open, I still have all of those wonderful, wonderful resources and wonderful friends. But what I learned is that it's so important that an anointing is in the marketplace. Yeah. And it's, an, it's important that um, uh, there you have a level. Titles don't mean a lot to us, but what I realized that as president, it opened doors that I wouldn't have gotten in as a manager or as, you know, you know what I'm saying? Presidents have a certain pride. And, and yeah. so God would open doors. I've, I've prayed in the mayor's office. I've prayed for governmental officials. I, 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 uh, because the door was open, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so even as, um, as we moved into this arena, I'm still preaching. I'm still uh, traveling. I'm still raising sons and daughters. I have maybe three or four patent note with no church, but I have three or four that was that were birthed out of me that are now pastors. And and um, so you don't have to have. We limit ourselves to think that we have to uh, uh, do certain things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet and let you ask your <laughs> questions. Well, amen. Well, you know, one thing for sure, we as uh, women and anyone, really, when you when God puts you in a place where you can open the door, leave the door open for yes, somebody else. Yes. So somebody else can walk through. You know, we can't be uh, selfish with our anointing. We can't be selfish with the things that God has given us and, and feel like we are the only one and we got it all. No, leave the door open for somebody else that they can walk in there key. because of what you have. You've already set the trail. I mean, you're the trailblazer. It's key. And so we have to understand that we don't have to be, you know, so protective over what God has given us. It's, Just it's be, key. Yes, it's key. It is. So, so saying that, that tells me, my sister, that the way that I behave, my character, mm -hmm. is really announcing the next yes. person. Yes. Okay? Yes. So you're never just representing yourself. No, never. You're never just representing your company. You're representing the kingdom of God. You're representing the kingdom. You're That's repre right. And I had a reputation. Uh, people knew that I was saved. Pe they, they, and and uh, I remember going to a woman in the mayor's office, and, and she says, you know, you have a reputation. I said, I do. She said, everybody knows. And it's not because I preached. I went in and had, well, sometimes I would sit and wait in places. I had a little small Bible that I right, would just right. read sometimes. But they knew uh, because of my standard. I'll, I'll, let me tell you one story in the marketplace. We were, we were negotiating um, pretty major, pretty major contract. And um, I was all day in a room, all men, sometimes uh, mostly, you know, of a different persuasion. And um, we were we got tired, and so we decided to go have dinner. And this was when the casinos first came, and I was just a little convicted about it. And I remember walking with all of these men, and um, to go and have dinner, and and they were going to walk uh, into an establishment, and it was one that I knew I couldn't go in. 
okay, as a woman of God. As mm-hmm. I was really preaching and teaching, and I knew that just someone just saw me in this particular establish, establishment, it would it would misrepresent God. So right. uh, now this was the person that had the ability and the power to give us the contract to to dot to sign on the dotted line. But I had to look at him and said, "It's my. It's I'm not. I'm not convicting you." But it's my conviction. I can't go into this establishment, and but I want you to go. You guys finish, and we'll talk in the morning. And I remember turning to God and saying, "Lord, I, I, I represented you. I, I couldn't go. Uh, so give me that contract." The next day, this person, who was very high up, uh, uh, working for the, for a particular city government, called me in his office and said, "Why didn't you go?" And I explained to him why. And he looked at me. He said, that's what's different about you. You're real. A lot of us preach it, but very few people live it. And it pivoted him to go back to his church and to begin teaching again. So that was huge. And we got yes. the contract. Yes. We received the contract. So I didn't have to sell myself out that's right. below, my, com- be- below yes. my convictions. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm yes. not, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing that. That's right. And, and we have to take a stand. We have to set a boundary and some standards. No compromise. No compromise. I'm, I'm not going to compromise to get a contract. I'm not going to compromise to have a, a, a relationship. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to compromise. Yeah, because I've, I've worked in a, in a uh, environment where it was 90% men when I was uh, in the business world selling cars. And so that was the standard that I had to have. And trust me, there was a lot of, you know, I'm single and there was a lot of men that come into the lot dealership and yeah. had money and positions and all of that, but it was no compromise. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And because of that, God honored that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. here today because of that. And that's why you look so beautiful because Amen. you didn't entangle your soul. Yeah. See, that's what we don't realize that compromise. There's no end to compromise. Just like there's no end to perversion. If you notice now, perversion is just at an all time high. Yes. It started off with something very small, right. but there's you 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 can never satisfy perversion. It, hunger, it, lust. And so you look beautiful. You don't look like you have, and I know you've been through some things, and, mm-hmm. and but you don't look like you've been run over with a tire because yeah. uh, you didn't compromise your soul. That's right. And that's what's so important. I, I, wanna, I want to say, though, that as kingdom leaders and kingdom, it's so important that we, we take over the entrepreneur you know, world, the world of entrepreneurism. You have so many ideas inside of us. There's so many things that God gives us, but it's necessary so that we can build homes uh, for the law. So uh, Detroit is going to be, uh, is one of the areas where we have more children now that are on the street, children that don't eat before they go to school. We have to have money uh, right. So that we could build uh, places for them to eat, we have to have money for women who are who are now unemployed with children on the street. We have to have money, even if we want to do STEM education. We want to strengthen our students to go into to the to the STEM, the science, the technology, the engineering, the arts. I'm gonna say STEAM, science, technology, in in uh, uh, engineering, arts, and math. Mm-hmm. We have to have the foundation. When we have the money, we can have the 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 uh, arcing place, the arching uh, message can be God and can be kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we keep going in man's establishment, we have to abide by their rules. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So uh, if we can start thinking bigger, if we right. can start feeling the burden of Jesus Christ and start uh, feeling uh, the burden of God himself, go get my children. And, and we start taking time out to look at what we have and not be afraid like that woman you talked about mm-hmm. to step over yeah. uh, what was told to us that we could not do and to step into your anointing. I'm telling you, it's time for us to build. It's time for us to kingdom. reveal kingdom, time. kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. It is. And if I can do it, uh, I'm looking for God to, to, to shift me into a new place now. Well, let's talk about that. Yes. Talk, since we're okay. right there and okay. we don't have let's a go. whole lot of time. All righty. But let's talk about um, this platform that God has given you now. And how, how, how did you get there? <laughs> it, it, it Again, it was a place that I thought I'd never do. But I heard, I, I heard uh, God saying, um, well, I didn't hear God. I'm not going to say I heard God saying, but I, I was up. Uh, I heard the spirit, my spirit just urged me to go ahead out 
and signed a petition. I started looking around in the neighborhood. I started seeing that uh, Lathrop Village is a beautiful city yes, that I'm is. so happy uh, to have lived in for over 16 years. Okay. And, uh, you know, we've had over 25 uh, members in my family that have been raised in the city. We have five households of family members that live there now. What's the so population? The population is 4,100. Oh, okay. And uh, we have... Uh, uh, probably over 3,000, a little over 3,000 households. Okay. Uh, what's interesting now, though, is that it's, it's, it's now um, a more mo minority uh, city now. Okay. And, uh, but those that live there, no matter uh, white, black, uh, rich, poor, we all love each other. And it's, it's, a, it's truly a village. Mm. Uh, my heart uh, saw that some of the businesses on Southfield Road were now mm -hmm. were declining. Yes. Uh, we are becoming a city that we still have a pulse, but where people are starting to step over. The younger generation is starting to step over our city and probably go to, uh, uh, I'm not going to name the other cities that they're thinking yeah, about yeah, going right, to live right, in. Right. But we have a city with a great pulse. And I believe that my business background uh, could come and, and my ability to know that some of the programs that are out there that Detroit use to, to grow or to to put a shot into the current businesses. They're also there for Lathrop Village. And so, um, and because I have, you know, the resources and the ability uh, to find out what can help the existing existing business owners um, begin to dress our Southfield Road up again. When I moved to Southfield, to mm -hmm. Lathrop Village. Now it is, okay, because I always thought I'm not a native of right, Detroit. Right, right, right. I've been here longer than right. I lived in, um, from Pennsylvania. But I always thought it was Southfield, so it's a it's a, like a city within a it's, city. It's it's our own city, and that's the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that people know that Lathrop Village, we have our own city council, and we have our own mayor, we have our own police city department. police department, we have a fire department. We are doing shared services now, somewhat with Southfield for some of these services, but we certainly do um, have our own policemen, and uh, we have uh, our own downtown development. Development Authority. We are a city, a real city, and okay. it's so. And and that's something. That's another one of my my desires is to let, us know let who you, you are. guys know yeah. that yes, we are. And so I am. Um, I, I I believe God is is going to challenge me uh, to let Him use me to to. Uh, to help reface the city with all the other council men and women that will be, because I'm believing God that it is a victory. Um, and I believe that that's going to be, but I think to, to be my assignment is to help rebuild the, the business okay. community. Other women are uh, on the council? Oh, the yes. Team? Yes. We have two other women. Right now, there are two women and three men. And one of the men uh, serves as mayor. And I've watched the, the way that they've worked together. It's just a phenomenal opportunity uh, to be in Lathrop Village's uh, government at a time when it needs to make a turn. And typically when God sends me into a place, it is to help uh, it grow. I, I'm a, I, I have a prophetic uh, grace on me that does help growth. Even when I went into my business, growth, and typically churches that I'm sent to, it's to help grow. That's the mantle that's on my life. And so I think that this is a different challenge. Uh, I can't go in there and say, okay, devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. You know, I cannot go in there with, with, with all of that. I, I will carry the glory and the weight of God, yes. but it's going to teach me to reach people that Jesus, Jesus went into communities. Jesus went into places where there were out, people were outcasts. Jesus, he was in the community. He was at receptions. He was, he was in places where the glory of God could reach, amen, not with if they weren't in the church. And I think uh, I didn't know that it was going to require all that it was required when I when I felt okay. the urging of the spirit of the Lord. I didn't know that it would require. All, but he typically doesn't tell us. Right. No, no, he don't. He I know show you've you experienced everything. that as well. That's right. That's right. He doesn't show you the whole picture because if he did. Oh, we my. Oh, we my. probably say, no, 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 that's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't know, but okay. but one of the questions that I know you have on there is um, ministry. Yes. How are you going to minister? Yeah, how, how are you going to do that? I have to. I will do it every Saturday. Okay. This is 
in business, you have to trust God. You know, when you talk about negotiating, God would literally, when I knew that we were negotiating a, a fairly large contracts, I would have dreams uh, because I never thought that it was on me. I always knew that we were there to represent the kingdom. So as long as your heart is there, even though it looks like they're going, you know, they got you, they got, they going, yeah. they going. You know, they're going to eat you alive right. if, you, if you just stay in faith. He would give me dreams at night on what, would, what was going to happen the next day. This is how serious God is about you. When he puts you in a place, mm -hmm. he never leaves you or forsakes you. Right. And so when it's time to negotiate, when it's time to go forward, he will give you, amen, uh, the foresight and the foreknowledge of what to do. And so I am so excited uh, about learning. And so in that process, I learned Okay. in that process. And then you have to go and read. You have to go and study some things. But I learned him and I learned what the people needed. When you go into the, 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 the uh, community, I have to hear what the people need. I have to I have to. That's why I had I have empowered to lead, committed to serve. Mm -hmm. To be empowered means that we're, we're always going somewhere to get empowered. But we were empowered when he rose from the dead. Right. He said, I but give you, power. what did he say? All power. And he said, I give, I give it you to you. I give it to who? To, to you. So we already have delegated authority. That's it. Right? But going into the community is going to be a little different challenge for me. And I believe that iron sharpens iron. I have to minister to all. I have to be there for all uh, people, right. no matter that's what that's what you're doing. Right. And um, but Jesus did that, and because he showed love, because he fed them, because he took care of some of their needs, they started. He was able to pull them in, amen, to the kingdom. And uh, but my goal is to let God get the glory by working with the businesses working with the seniors. I want to bring some of the STEM programs into our community for our youth. Uh, we have to begin to reach out to our young people and, and get the millennials back into our city. Yes, yes. Right? Absolutely. That's the next generation. It's this the, is the, yeah, yes, that's yeah. the generation we have to reach. Yeah. And they really need us. Um, you know, the, the Bible says that the, young, the older women, the elder women teach the younger women. Yes. You know, we have to be there for them because that's the generation. If, if God tarries, mm -hmm. if Jesus tarries, that's the generation that will be around that will continue to carry on and carry the gospel and carry the, the glory of God. So we, we have to reach them. And we have to have different techniques to re, uh, reach them now. It's yeah. not just the same old, same old, uh, you know, status quo kind of things now. You know, they're technological. They're, you know, they're into yeah. you know, all of yeah, the yeah. techie things. And so we, you know, we have to open ourselves up to, yeah. uh, you know, trying to reach them. But, and I have know, a group I, of them that I'm using them. Yes. When I run into them, I said, okay, your generation, I need you all to do all that tech stuff. That's right. And they love it. Yeah. I and need they're good at it. Make your generation vote. And it's just really important you know, uh, that, that we allow them yeah, to do and, that. And that's how, um, the president, when he won his first election, mm -hmm. it was with the, the techies, those yes. people that would go on the computers and they would give their donations and they would vote. And, and it was, it was done. A lot of it was done over the, uh, internet. Yes. So we know that is, hey, that's the age and the time that we're living in, you know. And so when I, when I was thinking about um, the scripture that came to me was Isaiah 9 and 6, and it said, and the government is on his shoulders. Yeah, it's on his shoulders. The, the government of God is on, uh, is on God's shoulders, but it's on our shoulders. It's on, and, and you know what? I, 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 it's on our shoulders, but we can't leave what, we, what God has put in our hands, well, you don't throw it away. I'm reminded of uh, the Bible says that when God sent David to kill Goliath, David didn't know that's what he was going to do, but the Bible says his Jesse woke up David to take food to his brothers. Right. But what's key in that verse is that David got up early and he took care of the sheep 
and he took care of everything before he went out. And I say that to say, getting back to my call to ministry, every Saturday I have had something in ministry. I traveled to uh, North Carolina two weeks ago to minister in a right. national women's conference where the power of God fell into that room. Then last Saturday I did a uh, funeral, mm -hmm. a homegoing service where over 100 people came to the Lord. And this Saturday I'm here with you. That's complete faith. Not, Amen. not thinking that if I don't do these, I have to do it. I'm gonna minister. Just got a call to go to Tortola. Okay. I, I am going to minister and do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we are certainly so proud of you, Pastor, Prophetess, yes. Evangelist, Praise the Donna, Lord. Peace Starlings. We are so proud of what God is doing in your life and. Uh, we just encourage more women. If that is a call, if that is a heart that you have for government, don't be afraid. It's one of don't it's one of the mountains of God that He wants us to go and change culture. He doesn't want us to be consumed by the culture. He wants us to go and change the culture. Yeah. And so here is a woman, a faithful woman of God that has served God so faithfully, and now God is elevating you. Wow! Well, and God He's putting you into another arena and opening doors. And so we're watching you. Praise God! And we want you to go and vote. Yes. And we want you to go and vote for her. Uh, if you're living in the city of uh, Lathrop Village, please go and to uh, vote for her. And what day is the election day? The election day is Tuesday, November 3rd. It's going to be a beautiful day, too, as okay. far as the weather. Right. And I'd like to leave my information. Okay. If go ahead. Uh, I want you to call me if you need prayer, if you need, uh, if you need a speaker to come and speak, or if you just need some information, please just reach out to me uh, at DSM ministries.com or you can email me at elect donna stallings at gmail.com i'm here for you i love you god bless you let's take the kingdom in jesus name amen well this has been the marketplace connection we hope that you have been inspired we love you today and we will see you next saturday at the Hallelujah. same time god bless you <sighs>